Okay, uh, the next parts will be on uh, the RTD and the thermocouple. They are both uh, temperature sensors. We use them to measure the temperature. Uh, remember that uh, with uh, instrument, we can't display, for example, 100 degree or 80 degree Celsius. We still use the graph where we have this graph, which is linear. How do you express our temperature? Is in terms of the output. This is your output from the instrument, and this is your process. What do you want? It can be uh, pressure, it can be temperature, it can be flow, it can be level, it can be speed. So, depending on the signal output from the sensor, for example, from the the current one, the RTD, we're getting current. It goes from 4 up to 20 milliamps. Okay? So, at the room temperature, normally uh, we have supposed to get 4 milliamps. The maximum temperature gives us 20 milliamps. So, that height works. So, you can find any current in between. If the temperature, for example, goes from 20 degrees Celsius or 24 up, let's say maybe to 300 degree, degree Celsius. So anything in between using this graph or the formulas, you can get the related temperature. Okay. So this one, the maximum 20 mil amps will give you the maximum temperature. That's what we'll be doing. Again, uh, no, don't save this. Let us now see how uh, do we connect an RTD or a thermocouple. From an RTD, uh, the output you're expecting is current, 4 to 20 milliamps. From the thermocouple, the output is voltage and it's in millivolts. We said 0 to 2 millivolts. Then uh, let's say we have. Uh, a tank okay like the one on the left the storage tank and then there you have a power the man your man is 220 volts it's AC here don't mess up this one it's dangerous then inside you have your heating element like the one in your kettle, the one on your stove, that's the heating element. Any heating element, and inside the tank we have water. There's water there. We're trying to, 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 to heat water. This is a tank. The heating element needs 220 volts. So what we do, we take the power from there, we send away 220. Can put the switch so when you close the switch you can hit anytime you want now how do we measure the temperature in this tank let's say there's water there inside if you want to know the temperature from this tank how do we do it so can use an uh, lm35 is also a temperature sensor it gives you an output of uh, zero i think it's one to five volts you can use a thermocouple and in this case we are using what we're using an rtd what happened now i can't see this thing here oh wow uh, take out this uh, okay so how do we connect our rtd to read the temperature water in this tank okay that's what we want to do there's water inside so uh, we need to put in the instruments or rtd remember the rtd in this case when you build or you design your your tank you need to put what is known as a thermal well okay 
you must put a thermal web. A thermal web is like is a shape in the tank. So what to do by the time of designing, you need to put something like this. It's a metal. So that your water, water will never go out. It's your thermal web. Okay? Then your RTD will go inside your thermal web. Then you take your RTD, it goes there. Well, take your RTD again. You put your RTD inside your thermal web. It stays there. Okay. Your RTD is like a, it's a resistor, so there's no polarity. So your RTD must go inside your thermal web. There's a, there's a big disadvantage of using a thermal web. You guys remember of the lag time, so it calls lag. So before the temperature reaches the RTD, it needs first to heat up your thermal web. It's one of the disadvantage of using a thermal web, but we need it. It's important. You can't uh, ignore the thermal web. So how do we solve that problem of the leg? What we do inside the thermal web, we can put what is known as capillary paste. We put a white paste in there. So remove any air gap. So that's how we solve the problem of dead time. It's by putting a capillary press. Okay? So that, that will allow quick heat transfer. Then on the other side, how do we now um, wire our RTD? We need a 24 volt power supply. There. We need a power supply is 24 volt DC not AC on this side okay then the RTD got two wires put the two wires there but in between before you go to your 24 volt power supply there is a device we use for the RTD we call it our transmitter so there is a transmitter there on the transmitter we have two small uh, calibration pins one and two the other one is known as your zero okay and the other pin is your span the purpose of your zero is for low range calibration and the purpose of your span is for your high range calibration what i mean let's say that uh, at the room temperature before i hit the water in this tank you know all of us that at the room temperature the water might be uh, 24 degrees celsius so on the, this is what i'm expecting this i have to be if the maximum temperature in this tank let's say it's gonna be 100 100 degrees That means the 100 degree will go there, 100 degree maximum. And if the minimum temperature, for example, is 24 degree Celsius, that means that this must be linear, it's a straight line, like, like this. Okay, that's what that's. The output signal will be current from a RTD. What output? We are expecting the output must be uh, 4 milliamps to 20 milliamps. Okay. Simply mean that normally when when the temperature is at 24 degree, the output from the RTD must be 4 milliamps, and when it's 20 milliamps output that means the temperature has reached 100 degree that's how we read so in between we can get a value there like the is gonna be 50 okay that's gonna be 50 then let's say that the temperature is 24 here and on the 
output from the artery is giving us, for example, 3.5 milliamps. So what do we do before we start measuring? We need to calibrate the instrument. So in that case, we have to adjust our zero to bring it to 4. So you adjust your zero to bring 3.5 to 4. Then when the temperature is at maximum, if, for example, you are reading 19.4 milliamps, and support to be 20, then we have to adjust your span to bring it to 20 milliamps. So that's the purpose of the zero and the span. And from there, the output of the transmitter goes to your power supply, 24 volts. And also this one goes to Normally, this is how you power the instrument. So if you do like this, there will be an output of 0 to 20 milliamps. Now, where do you get that signal output? Because this is our supply. What we have to do, we need to break one of the line here. We need to break there and connect our multimeter. So if you put your multimeter there, this is your multimeter. Okay. This is your multimeter there. If you connect one line there and another on the other side, you have a signal output which goes from 4 to 20 milliamps. Okay, that's how. So if the temperature is 24 degree, you're gonna have 4 milliamps, and when it's 100 degree, you're gonna have 20. Anything in between, you have also the current output. This is how we can measure the temperature using an RTD. Then if I want to read voltage, you can remember you can convert current into voltage, then I have to put a 250 ohm resistor there. So if I put 250 ohms resistor, the output will become 1 to 5 volts. This will be your experiment, we'll be doing the lab this way. So you guys, if you understand this, I'm sure you will be able to apply it and see the reality, the results on your multimeter. Thank you. Good luck.